the diagnosis starts with the clinical presentation. So history taking and physical exam becomes relevant. The next step is radiologic workup and of course the difficulty here is that so many people are going to have lumps and bumps here and there. There can be mosquito bites that feel like they're pretty big and, and worrisome and so on and so forth. So I, I think clinical judgment will have to prevail to sort of figure out as to which one does require some radiologic imaging. The radiologic characteristics are fairly uh, uh, representative and fairly diagnostic, if you will, if it was truly a benign lesion versus truly a malignant lesion. There can always be some gray zones, and the gray zones will generate further additional workup with what the next step would be, tissue diagnosis and biopsy. When we get into the histopathologic diagnosis, the assumption here is that there is some radiology, radiology guidance. There are suspicious findings on ultrasound, CAT scan, or MRI. Uh, and if the suspicion of a malignant tumor, i.e. sarcoma in this instance, is entertained, a purist's viewpoint would be that it would be best that that patient is handled by people who are trained in oncology because it may seem simple to just stick a needle in and do a biopsy, or as many a times in the community someone says, oh, this is a lump, I'm going to just splice it open and take a small piece of tissue. I think where the needle track is, where the incision is placed, clearly has consequences with the ultimate definitive management of the tumor. So an area that we may emphasize a little later in the conversation, the multidisciplinary care, has already started at this stage. Because the diagnosis is made by multiple different disciplines, the clinicians putting their clinical knowledge together, radiologists contributing the radiology findings, likewise, you do need the right radiologists or the surgeons, whoever is doing the biopsy, to be involved in the process. More often than not in this day and age, we recommend needle biopsies or core biopsies. Open biopsies are not always necessary. And so the interventional radiologists need to have some experience and expertise in approaching the lesion directly without compromising the final uh, surgical operation that the patient may need. Now when we get a smaller sample to make the biopsy process easier and less costly and less cumbersome for the patient and the healthcare system, inherent in that process is the requirement that you have pathology expertise to look at a small sample of tissue and be able to make the diagnosis. And this is totally not meant to be disrespectful, but what I do every day I'm very good at and what I don't do every day I'm obviously not very good at. As rare as these tumors are, as we've already described, it's totally unfair in many ways for a community pathologist to have to make this diagnosis. If they're absolutely stuck with the tissue, I think in my experience many of them have the connections, if you will, with some reference laboratories where the tissue would be sent out for so-called second opinions for final diagnosis. Because as rare as these tumors are and as heterogeneous as they are, as we've talked about, it's not practical to think that the community pathologist, uh, maybe they can, but certainly it's not fair to expect that they should or would get the right diagnosis. The histotype does matter as we may get into the treatment related decisions on this later on. So classifying the tumor as a sarcoma versus a benign tumor versus a different kind of cancer. Within a sarcoma then trying to assign it the right subtype which clearly has prognostic and therapeutic implications becomes very relevant. I say it's not fair to the community pathologist simply because even at major academic centers, these happen to be still rare tumors in the practice of most oncologists, even at university centers. So the number of patients that they encounter with these group of diseases may vary from one or two every three to four years to maybe one or two a year to some major referral centers where there is a established program, we see over a thousand patients in a given year within the group. So 
it, it's, it's a matter of experience and expertise both. And the more they see, the more comfortable they get, and the more likely they are to get to the right diagnosis as early as they can, because that's when the ball gets punted right back to the therapeutic arm of the multidisciplinary team, meaning the surgeons, radiation therapists, and medical oncologists, to say, what are the prognostic factors for this sarcoma, and what's the best way to manage this patient?